Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can pass a data object through local storage. In case you're not aware, local storage is a way that you can store data in the browser and then retrieve it later on. It will survive a page refresh and if you use local storage, the data will persist to the next user session. In fact, the only reason that it will be removed from local storage is via JavaScript or the user clears their browser data. Now, the issue with trying to store an object in local storage is that local storage only accepts string data. So if you try to store the object in local storage, so the first argument that you pass in to set item is the key under which you want to store the data. And the second is the data itself. In this case, the object and on another page, I'm getting that item from local storage by its key. And then I'm logging that item to the console. So when I navigate from the first page where the data is being stored in local storage to the second page, I'll see what was stored there. So as you can see, we don't have the data object being logged to the console. And this is because local storage, it only accepts string data. And we tried forcing an object in there and it was coerced to this string output, which is probably not the result you would be hoping for. So the solution is to stringify the object first, pass it into local storage, and then when retrieving it, read it back into native JavaScript object format. So to get this object in string format, you can pass it into json.stringify. This will return the object in JSON string format, which is a universally recognized way of representing data in objects based upon JavaScript syntax. So if I save the JSON string to local storage now, instead, of the object and if we take a look at that item in local storage you see that it's now represented there and it's in string format now when you retrieve it you don't want it to be in string format because you can't then query the object or work with the object like you could if it were in javascript native data object format. So to get an object from this JSON string data, you can pass it into json.pass and that will return the data in JavaScript native object format. So I'll log to the console, return value of that rather than the original value that is retrieved from local storage. And the result is an object in JavaScript native format that I can work with in the normal way. So you can see that querying the name property, it worked. And even though the object was stringified, if you take a look at the data types of properties that were not originally in string format, they've been passed back to their original data type. And the same technique, it would work or passing the data in an array through local storage. So a quick way to convert an object into an array is to pass it in to object dot entries. So we're now stringifying an array that contains the same data as the object. And when we retrieve it, we can't query an array like we do an object. Instead, I'll log the item that is first in the array. So I need to go back to the previous page that will store the item in local storage. And now you see that the outcome is the array that I created on the first page. Now, a few important usage notes to finish. The first is that if you try stringifying an object that contains a function. This won't work because a function cannot be represented 
in JSON string format. So in that case, you would want to reconstruct the object after retrieving the data. The second usage note is that you want to be careful if you're storing sensitive data in local storage, because if somebody can run JavaScript on your page, then they could query local storage and get any sensitive data that is stored there. So you shouldn't store any data there that you mind if it's exposed to this vulnerability or data that you don't want to expose to this. It's best to store it and retrieve it from a server. And finally, there is an alternative to local storage called session storage. So the difference is that local storage, it stores data across user sessions. So if I close and I visit the page again in a new session, then you can see the data is still there. But if you use session storage instead, it works in exactly the same way as local storage. And I try again. So if I go back to index.html, so this data is now being retrieved from session storage rather than local storage but if i revisit the page like i did last time then the data is no longer there because with session storage all data that's stored there is cleared at the end of a session so if you don't want data to persist across user sessions you can use session storage instead so that is it for this tutorial i hope you found it useful if you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.